record this. And I am going to share my screen and we're going to get the party started. Okay. Hello. Joining us today, welcome to our DT DTCX Tech Masterclass series. Today, we're diving into five e comm tools for building a fashion and apparel brand. My name is Dylan Duchesne, and I will be your host for this afternoon. And I will also be speaking a little bit later. Uh, so you're going to hear a lot of my voice today. Apologies in advance. But uh, we do have a star studded lineup as well. So we have Luis from Okendo, Katya from Grin, Noah from Tapcart, and Millie from Clearco. Uh, some incredible leaders in the space, you guys. So we're going to get lots of knowledge today from these wonderful speakers. Um, as always, I encourage everyone to be very active in the chat. Let's tell jokes. Let's get to know one each other. Let's ask questions, give feedback, engage with the speakers and the other guests. If you guys want to post us on social media, please use the hashtag DTCX. We really, really appreciate the love and all of the support. Um, and not only are we going to be getting some incredible tips and tricks today from our speakers, but we also have some special giveaways for everyone. So our hosts, our, our speakers have graciously given us some fun prizes. So we have a HomePod Mini up for grabs, uh, the Milk Bar Treats, AirPod Pros, a $100 gift card to Gusto, uh, AGI single subscription box. So some really, really fun goodies. I'm going to do it the old fashioned way after someone presents. I'm going to close my eyes, go through the attendee list, and then I'm going to pick the lucky winner. So I'm going to stop actually sharing my screen for now because that's the that's the end of my introduction, some fire giveaways, and I am going to bring up our, our first speaker to the stage so we can get this party going. So first up, we have Noah Small from Tapcart. He is the Senior Technology Partner Manager. So we're going to bring Noah up to the stage. Um, fun fact about Noah, he is the youngest of five siblings and an uncle to 13 nephews and nieces. That is one hell of a big family. I come from just, I got one brother. That's all I got. So that's, that's really fun. I bet you guys have some fun, some fun holidays. Oh, Noah is frozen. We're going to get him back hopefully in two seconds. We've been having a couple of technical difficulties this morning, but maybe let's take Noah off stage and bring him back on. We'll try that. But my goodness, 13 nephews and nieces, five siblings. I'm jealous, honestly. You don't need, you don't even need to have friends when you have a family that big. Hi, Noah. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I don't know what happened there. I don't think. No, you're uh, good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank God. Can't complain. I'm, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for joining us. You got to fill us in on how was it growing up with five siblings and 13 nephews and nieces? Uh, it was a lot. I uh, definitely got beat up a lot, but I have an awesome family, really big family. Believe it or not, uh, we actually all hadn't been together since before the pandemic. And we all went, um, we're on a trip to Mexico about two weeks ago with the entire family. So there's like 19 of us in all and uh, we were all staying in one hotel together and uh let's just put it this way i, I kind of felt bad for the other people at the hotel there was just like so many like kids running around and that's really amazing reminded, like, being back home but yeah super big family i love it what a reunion that's so special i'm very, yeah, was, very jealous well listen was, we're so happy that you're here with us today i'm gonna hop off screen and then i'm gonna let you get straight to it let's do it Awesome. So you guys can see my screen. Awesome. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, everyone at Gorgeous. This has been an uh, awesome experience so far, just like planning this. Brittany, Anna, um, uh, Dylan, like you guys just have been awesome. Thank you so much for letting us lean on you guys for this. Um, and we're really excited to present here. So today uh, I have a few things that I want to go through. Uh, a quick intro on myself, which, you know, I think you guys already know enough about myself, but I'm a senior uh, technology partner manager over at Tapcart. I want to talk about why mobile and mobile commerce for a little bit, push notifications and the future uh, app clips. I, I'm definitely biased here. I, I really want to get to the end of this presentation. Really excited about app clips. Haven't presented uh, it yet, but it's a new feature that we're going to be offering our merchants. So I'm going to go a little quicker through the few, first few slides just so I can get through um, the rest of them. But just jumping right in, uh, mobile commerce in general, 
um, huge uptick that we're seeing. I don't think, you know, every trend that, that you see or in statistic is showing a huge uptick in mobile commerce. We're spending more time on our phones and in apps um, than we ever have before. You know, if you, today's day and age, if you want to know where, you know, your friends are at, you go on Instagram. If you want to go on a date, you go on a dating app. If you want food, a lot of times uh, you go to Grubhub or DoorDash. So we're spending uh, just an immense amount of time on our phones. And one of the first questions that we have when we're talking to merchants over at TapCard is we ask them like, what percent of your traffic is coming from a mobile device? And usually like on average, um, we hear 79%. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, like I've been on a few sales calls where this number was a lot higher, it was 85, 95%. Um, but almost always the rate of conversion on, you know, mobile browsers is, is just a lot lower. Um, so the amount of people who are actually going on the mobile uh, website and actually checking out is a lot lower than they were at least hoping. The reason for this is there, there's a few reasons, but um, from a high level, selling on mobile mobile is just is difficult. Um, and it's in its simplest form, a web browser experience is suboptimal to, let's say, the experience of an app um, because it, it, it's harder to navigate. It's not as quick. Uh, clunky checkout, which leads to frequent cart abandonment. And overall, the UX and UI component are just not as seamless as users have come to expect. Um, there's an example that happened to me recently. I was, you know, just at home on, you know, watching TV and I saw a few products on Instagram that I liked and I added them to my cart, um, went to PayPal and I forgot my PayPal account and then kind of left my cell phone for a little bit, came back and I was already logged out and I went back to Instagram's homepage and I had lost everything in my cart. So at that point, I just kind of gave up. Um, but that's just one example of kind of the ways that, you know, the web browser experience is suboptimal. What I really want to talk about is push notifications. So push notifications are one of the most powerful tools you get when you download an app. So if you're on your phone, um, you opt into, you know, a, um, an app, it's going to give you the ability to opt into push notifications. More than 75 people, 75% of people do opt into those. And what I want to talk about is push notifications as an owned marketing channel, as opposed to Facebook and Instagram. So let me break down what I mean by own marketing channel. It's, it's not super complicated. It's a marketing channel that you own. Uh, but the way that I, I like thinking about it is it, it's anywhere that you have subscribers, but not necessarily followers. So on Instagram and Facebook, you might have followers on Instagram, but who owns that audience? Well, Facebook owns that audience and controls who sees what and when they see it. So when you put something on Instagram, you're fundamentally creating something that another company, in this case, Facebook, is making money off of. And as a rule, you want to take as much ownership of your sales and marketing end to end and not rely on these tech giants to distribute your message, right? Their loyalty is, is really to their shareholders and not really to you. But unlike subscribers, um, unlike followers, subscribers are, are people who have actually provided you their email, their phone number, they've downloaded, let's say your app and opted into push and said, I want to hear from this brand. And 100% of people that have opted into push notifications will see them. So th there's really no better way to grow your brand and not have to worry about um, algorithms changing, uh, cost of paid acquisition doubling, and all types of rules that make you rely on these massive tech giants um, other than push notifications. So ad prices have gone up 2x in the last 12 months. And who says you know they're not going to keep going up? And as you see from this slide right here, um, organic reach is pretty low. For Facebook, it's 2.2%. Instagram, 9.4%. This, you know, uh, just a few years ago, these numbers were a lot higher, um, but they've just come down so low that organic reach is, you know, somewhat of a joke. If you, I, I, I don't normally get my jokes from LinkedIn, but I saw this one and I, it definitely made me crack up um, from marketing joke of the day. Uh, I made a joke about organic reach on Facebook. Nobody got it. Uh, I, I thought that was pretty witty, um, but, you know, there's a little truth in every joke. Um, and this one definitely has a lot of truth. Uh, around organic reach just because it's 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 reaching so few people. I want to talk a little bit about some of the other owned marketing channels that are out there. So email and SMS um, are, are two other owned marketing channels and in and, and no way do I want to bash them. I think um, when used correctly, they can definitely be effective um, and, and be used alongside push notification. Uh, but I just want to kind of note a few differences 
uh, between them and push notifications. So email scales really well. Uh, you know, it, it's free, but it, it doesn't generally have the best engagement. I know for myself and a lot of other people, they have a promotions tab. A lot of emails just end up going there. The click-through rate might not be as high. Um, with SMS, I think there's a much higher engagement, but it's it's just not as scalable because it costs money. So if you have you know 100,000 recipients, um, you know it's going to cost you $1,000. So you're limited just in the amount of text messages that you might want to send. Although it can definitely be effective. Push notification kind of like you know is the best of both worlds because it's an own marketing channel like email and SMS but you're getting a very, very high level of engagement and you can send as many of them as you want. Um, so, you know, if you, you can send along a, a an unlimited amount of push notifications with Klaviyo right along with email and SMS. And really like how we differentiate ourselves is really like the, how content rich a push notification is. I want to give you guys, show you guys an example right here. This is a push notification for Princess Polly. Um, notice how content rich it is, how on brand it is. Um, it's dynamic. You're getting these alerts in real time. So you're really like gives you the sense that you're part of this community of people. And if this is a brand that you follow, these are the types of, you know, information discounts that you get excited about. Um, and even for me, I, you know, I definitely have a few brands that I follow, but even some of the new brands that I've downloaded, just being updated on them all the time is a great way to, you know, as a hook to, to grab people in and really show them, you know, interesting new products that you're releasing and, you know, new discounts as well. So in summary, with push notifications, you're creating this, this new communications channel that's, it's just a lot more intimate. It's a lot more on brand. And, and really the last thing is that it comes through at a much faster rate of engagement than the others. So if I am a Princess Polly app user and I get a notification about a flash sale or back in stock, I'm much more likely to act on it right away. For me, if I get an email, like oftentimes it'll go into my promotions tab. I won't look at it for a few days. Um, and you lose that urgency with the customer. And as a rule, the more time it takes, the less effective the message uh, is, is going to be. Going to the next, uh, oh yeah, top performing push flows. So as I mentioned, you can send along an unlimited number of push notifications with Klaviyo, right along with your email and mess SMS. I just wanted to call out a few of the most common push flows that we see on our end. Uh, abandoned cart, um, welcome series, back in stock. Like I'm definitely the king of abandoned cart. I told you guys that story that happened to me before. I feel like I'm always shopping um, on my phone. And then like, I have a lot of hesitation right before I press the checkout button. Um, I found these abandoned cart notifications are killer. Like they're just like, keep reminding me that I got to get back to, uh, I got to get back to the app. And it's just so easy because you just literally swipe uh, on the, on the push notification and it takes you to exactly where you were when you left off shopping. Wine app, uh, I'll just, I, I see I'm, I'm running out of time over here and I want to get to app clips really quickly. I, I think the point here is that um, the experience that you want to have on the app, you want it to mimic the experience that you're having on desktop. And, and that's just not what's happening on a web browser. Um, with, when you're using an, an app, you're getting rapid load times. Navigation through the app is just a lot easier and more seamless. You have clean page layouts and the checkout experience is going to be a lot quicker. Going to skip to app clips. Okay, I made it. Um, so you know, one of the challenges we have with apps in general, um, you know, is really like, you know, the friction that it takes to download an app. So, you know, I'll be the first one to tell you downloading an app is not always a quick and, and easy process. It's, it's a pretty big commitment to download an app. And really another big factor is just the real estate that it takes on your phone. Um, you might have hesitation to, you know, download uh, an additional app because you're like, oh, you know, this is just like another thing that I have to have on my phone. Um, and in addition to that, you, you know, there's just a lot of friction in the signup process. You're going to the app store, you're logging into an Apple ID, you're tapping install. Um, and that's where app clips comes in. It's really a game changer in this area. So an app clip, think of it as like a miniature version of an app that is focused on a specific task and designed to appear as soon as you need it. So, you know, another way to think about it is like, you know, it's like a streamed app. So it's like when you use Netflix, you're not downloading the movie. Same thing with app clips. You're streaming the app and you're not actually downloading the app. So it allows you to use it in a really frictionless and seamless way. Um, so app clips really remove the need for you to either find the correct app on your phone or download it from the app store, both of which are probably going to take you a lot longer than just launching an app clip is. So I'm going to show uh, a few examples of, of, of what it can look like after this video, but I just want to give you guys a sense of 
what an app clip is. So imagine you sign a QR code, I'm playing this video right here. Um, you know, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, you see a, a jacket that you like, this is the jacket that there was a QR code right beneath, you press on it, all of a sudden you go to Apple Pay, boom, you're paying for your experience in like 12 seconds. It's an incredibly easy and seamless process. And again, you haven't downloaded the app at all. It's just a streamed app. Now, overall, like the idea with app clips is that eventually you want these folks to actually download the app. And there are a lot of different things that we can do within the app to incentivize folks to actually download um, the app eventually. So if you're in an app clips and your post-purchase experience, you can, you can put this like a sign that says, a banner that says receive 20% off, tap here to receive a discount, discount that you can use in the app, which is gonna drive a lot more adoption to the app, but it's a much slower uh, experience for the, for the customer um, before they, you know, as opposed to just coming to them and be like, hey, please download the app. Um, there are endless examples um, that this can be used. In all honesty, it's kind of the wild, wild rest right now for app clips in the e-commerce space. You might have seen them in, in certain, they're definitely out there. Uh, two uh, areas that I've seen are um, like, there are a few scooter companies that are using it. So, you know, if you want to pay for the scooter really quickly, you just, you know, tap on an NFC code um, and then you can pay for the scooter. Um, there are a bunch of other examples that are out there as it relates to e-commerce. So you could, let's say you had a long line at a store, you can put an NFC tag on the product um, and someone can just literally buy the product there in a second and walk out of the store. Um, you can also put an NFC code on a bag of coffee and you can, on the back of it, it says, you know, if you're running low on coffee, tap your iPhone here and you tap on it and boom, you pay with Apple Pay and within seconds you've made a purchase. One other that I've seen, um, you know, people are talking about is, is putting app clips in live events. So imagine if, you know, you're someone is presenting, you know, at a conference and they're rolling out a new product that they want folks to buy. You can actually have like a large QR code on the screen behind them and offer an app clip for a limited discount price of the product. And so everyone who's sitting there can just like take out their phones really quickly, um, get download the app clip, have a really seamless experience, buy the product. Um, and then eventually, hopefully they're going to download the app. But even if they don't, they've just been able to buy that product in such a frictionless way. Um, there are many different ways that you can open up uh, an app clip. It can come from a QR code, a web link, an NFC, an iMessage or web embed. Um, as I mentioned, there are many ways that you can incentivize folks to actually install the app after they've bought something on app clips. And just two, two other items that, that I think are, are really exceptional is that um, if you do download an app clip, it stays in your library for 30 days. So you can easily come back to it um, if you're interested in buying that product again or downloading the app and you're automatically opted into push notifications. So I think, like I mentioned before, it's, it's really just so many opportunities with um, app clips for what you can do with it and how it can benefit your, your customers. Um, we're in a, a beta version of this with some of our merchants. It's something that you're going to hear a lot more uh, about from TapCard in the coming months. Um, but uh, I'm going to stop there. I think I'm out of time. But uh, thank you so much. Yay. Amazing. That was great. We, you know, the chat was popping off. I know we have a few people are, a lot of people are asking, you know, like if you have a really good recommendation for an app creation platform, like what would you recommend? What's your, what's your top recommendation there? Like where to, how to drive adoption to apps in general. That's yes. probably what, yeah. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of different ways that you can drive app, uh, app adoption. When you sign up with Tapcart, we actually have a team that's going to walk you through like what are the best ways that you can do it. Some really interesting ways that I've seen with folks are where they're actually will put like a QR code on their website and say like, hey, um, download our app and you're going to get a significant discount or they'll only put specific products on the app at a discounted price. Um, and that's just like a really great way to incentivize folks to download your app as well. I happen to really think app clips is gonna be a game changer for incentivizing people to actually download the app. Because like I mentioned before, it's just that first stage of like getting them in the door. They're gonna basically buy products from you on an app without downloading it. And eventually they will hopefully download the app um, when they love your product and you know all that good stuff happens. I love it. I love it. Well, that was perfect. That was super insightful. Uh, Noah and Tapcart are giving away an Apple HomePod mini, which is sick. So I am going to close my eyes. I'm going to go through the attendee list. Omar Carey, you are the winner of an home 
Apple HomePod Mini. Omar, congratulations. Congrats, Omar. I love it. All right. Well, Noah, thank you so much. A pleasure as always. Thank you so much. Great to see you guys. See ya. All right, everyone. Fantastic start to our afternoon. I absolutely love it. Let's keep this party going. So next up, we have Luis from Okendo. He is an agency partner manager. So we're going to bring up Luis to the stage. Uh, fun fact about Luis. Luis did security for the Office cast member, Rain Wilson, who plays Dwight. Dwight is my favorite character. And then you did this for a parade. Wait, tell me, how was it? How is he in person? He's really he's really attractive, actually. <laughs> I'll, I I'll be the first one to say it. Yeah, he was, I was just blown away. I'm like, you're Dwight? Um, and yeah, can you guys hear me okay, by the way? Uh, yes, can hear you. Awesome. But yeah, uh, let me just finish sharing my screen here. Uh, yeah, he, he's a really cool dude. Uh, he's very popular. We had to throw a few people out of the convertible that we were walking behind during the parade, but it was a lot of fun. And we got to grab drinks with the cast, so like Steve Corral and the rest of them uh, afterwards. And I was just a 21 year old college student. So it blew my mind. Oh my God, I love that. Feedback. That's iconic. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, Luis, thank you so much for joining us. I am going to hop off and I'll let you get to it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Dylan and the gorgeous team for hosting us today. Uh, Noah, awesome presentation and congrats, Omar, on the Apple HomePod Mini. I'm extremely jealous of you. Um, yeah. And, and hey, everyone, my name is Luis. And today I'm going to be walking you all through four growth hacks for direct to consumer fashion and apparel brands brought to you by Okendo Reviews and UGC. Uh, first, a little bit about me. I am an agency partner manager, as Dylan said, and I work at Okendo, which is a certified Shopify Plus marketing application, helping direct-to-consumer brands generate reviews and social proof. Um, I've been in the world of e-com for a little over seven years now. And before joining Okendo, I was working in client acquisition uh, for Shopify Plus development agency called Glenn Rockwell. And before that, I was working on the brand side for a fashion brand called Rebecca Minkoff in e-commerce and operations. And so definitely feel free to scan my QR code. Like Noah said, I, I use that as well in my presentations. Uh, so go ahead and scan this QR code if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, chat uh, after the webinar about e-commerce or any of the topics we're covering today. <clears throat> so we're going to start things off with the importance of capturing and leveraging high impact user generated content. So photos and videos from your community. From there, we'll talk about how to increase conversions with robust reviews. Then we'll walk through uh, zero party data and integrating reviews with your email and SMS provider. And we'll wrap things up with how to increase your click through rate and your return on ad spend uh, through Google. So number one, uh, definitely capturing and leveraging high impact UGC. It's key to leverage this UGC in the form of photos and videos throughout your entire website experience. 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual, and we process images 60,000 times faster than text. You can leverage this UGC on your product detail page in media galleries and product recommendation carousels to really create more of a feeling of authenticity across your brand. And through Okendo, we also make it so that you can uh, have a review testimonial be included in each of the UGC shots, as well as an average star rating to really layer in another level of social proof. And one of our clients here, LSKD, is doing a great example of that, of pulling in that content from the uh, review capture process and layering the testimonials here. In addition to showcasing this and, and creating that more authentic feel, this will also boost your uh, average uh, page session duration with your users, which helps you rank higher on SEO. Uh, you should also certainly engage with your customers by advocating that they tag your brand in, in their Instagram content, featuring your product, and then feature this content on your website to really for, like support that authenticity factor. One way to generate more reviews and UGC for your website is by using incentives. And so, you know, we did a survey here at Okendo and found that 73% of consumers say they'd be motivated uh, to write a review if they were offered some type of incentive. So take, for example, what LSKD is doing here. Uh, they're incentivizing this customer, Barry, uh, to leave a review on his product by offering a 10% coupon for his next order. You can also send email reminders to folks who have left a review but haven't left a photo uh, by offering them that same incentive. Or you can use a reminder to remind someone who already left a review and received that coupon code to use a coupon. And that way, they'll generate a second order. And this type of email communication back and forth really opens 
a two-way dialogue with your buyers and helps generate engagement from your customers too. And as a result, you'll create a deeper relationship with customers and turn one-time buyers into long-term loyal customers. And so the second growth hack today is how to increase conversions and reduce returns with robust reviews. So here at Okendo, we've seen that 99.9% .9 of customers read product reviews before making a purchase. And customers are willing to spend an additional 31% more with a brand that has excellent reviews on site. We've also seen that 57% of shoppers read reviews while they've, they're like actually shopping in the brick and mortar stores to assess potential purchases. And I'm super guilty of this, especially like if I'm in a big store like a Target or something like that. So reviews have become more important now than ever before, especially with regards to increasing your website's conversion and reducing the amount of returns you get into your company. And so, you know, of course, a five-star review will let you and your team know that your customer liked the product, but it doesn't necessarily tell you anything else besides that. That's where a feature like product attributes can come into play to really highlight key selling points for your product. So this is one of our clients here, Minimal. They're a fashion apparel brand based out of LA. Uh, and they're leveraging their product attribute information to showcase selling points like their stretch denim jeans quality, the design. So that way they're not relying on their customer or the reviewer here to put this feedback in the body of the review. They're capturing those data points throughout the uh, review process. You can also increase your conversions by showcasing customer attributes uh, within a review as well. So in this case, minimal showcasing the type of build this customer has, usual size they purchase, and the fit of the product. Uh, this allows your customers to line their purchase decision with someone that has similar characteristics to them. So in this other example, this is a direct-to-consumer fashion apparel brand called Grace & Lace. They're really taking things one step forward here by showcasing their customers like height, age range, the customer's body shape, and a lot more sizing information regarding the product's fit. Uh, you can also even filter the review content based off of these attributes. So customers can display information that is relevant and contextual for them. So robust reviews leveraging customer and product attributes help brands reduce returns too. In this example for Taft, which is a higher end footwear brand, uh, there is a customer, Roman, who left this review, he typically wears a size seven shoe. He bought this size seven shoe for everyday use and he's confirming here that the sizing is true to size. And so if I was a shopper or a potential buyer who was also a size seven shoe and I saw this review, it would definitely boost my buyer confidence and reduce the likelihood of me sending it back in a return. So tip number three uh, is collecting zero party data and integrating reviews with email and SMS and customer product attributes are both excellent examples of zero party data which have an enormous impact on your site. And before we kick things off with this tip, let's just review what zero party data is. There are four different types of data in general, each very different and utilized in different ways by brands. Zero party data is data proactively and intentionally given by customers directly. So reviews and those customer attributes we just showcased are great examples of zero party data. First party data is data collected by companies when customers or prospects engage with the brand. This is often inferred from their behavior on site. So think of like clicks, pages viewed, or even like order information and history, you know, shipping information, things of that nature. Second party data is first party data, which has been shared and sold by a company to another company. So second party data is gonna give access to much more niche and specialized data types. And lastly, third party data is information you purchase from like a data aggregators or advertisers or by running tracking ads with companies like Facebook and Instagram. And it's typically what we're more familiar with. So when you're capturing this zero party data from your customers through review or like a survey or something of that note, it is essential to maintain trust. You'll want to keep the data collection relevant to your product and the industry too. Oop, skip the slide there. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, the benefits of reviews is that customers understand why you're asking them the questions in the first place about like their age and behaviors. They're also being given an incentive to provide it to you, and they're being they see it displayed on the review itself. Chances are they probably even use other customers' information to help inform their initial buying decision. You also want to be careful to like not ask for too much information. We suggest that brands keep uh, five to seven attributes as a maximum for best practice user experience. And also make sure to reward your customers for providing this added value to your brand 
which although also further maintains trust. Coupons and incentives are great rewards for leaving reviews as we previously discussed. So you can leverage this type of zero party data and attribute information by syncing them as data points to your email and SMS platform of choice. This allows the attribute information to get added to your customer data profile within those platforms. From there, you can get very creative from a marketing standpoint by creating very specific audience segments based off of the attribute information, whether it's like age range or anything. And you can even curate hyper-specific campaigns meeting those customers where they are. We have an integration with Klaviyo in particular, which enables you to leverage this zero-party data dynamically to supercharge any of your email and SMS campaigns. You can also use that Okendo Klaviyo integration to send all your review requests from a single source. And you can even uh, use an Okendo trigger to uh, you know, really influence any other existing flows you have. Lastly, uh, you can even add in social proof once again to any of the existing flows in your email or SMS platform. Take for example, like an abandoned cart flow or product recommendation flow. And this social proof will help boost the click-through rate and engagement rate that you have within those campaigns. So one of our clients is Nimble. They're in the fashion apparel space and also at Leisure. And they're leveraging Okendo ratings, reviews, and zero-party data within their Klaviyo flows and in particular within their abandoned cart flows. And since they fired off this integration, they've seen an increase of 16% in average revenue per recipient and a 74% relative increase in click-through rate. The last growth hack for me today is how to increase your click-through rate and return on ad spend on Google. Uh, so you can leverage your reviews platform's Google Shopping integration to add star ratings to your Google Shopping ads. And this is super easy to do in Okendo. It's just a flip of the switch in our back end within our select settings. And in this example here, one of our clients, Skims, which is uh, Kim Kardashian's shapewear brand, is showcasing uh, the average star rating and number of reviews in their product li listing ads here which is encouraging click-through rate for their ads and making them a lot more eye-catching, especially when you compare it to some of their other competitors here like Net-A-Porte and Spanx. And we know that consumer behavior dictates that consumers are going to engage with an ad that has that added layer of social proof. You can also add star ratings to your organic rich snippets so that they stand out in search results and really capture the attention for any potential uh, customers. Reviews in general are also really packed of high intent, high value keywords which also help you uh, rank higher in search engines. And so we have a client here at Okendo called the Office Evangelist Scott. Uh, they're a female founded footwear brand, amazing like female uh, contemporary office wear. And they were uh, having a very high investment with their Google ads, especially, especially product listing ads. And they weren't seeing too much traction until they fired off that Okendo Google Shopping integration to layer in that average star rating and number of reviews. Once they started using our integration with Google, they saw a 91% increase in return on ad spend, 81% increase in conversion rate, and a 51% increase in cost per action. So massive success. And so those are the four growth hacks for me today. Love to uh, answer any questions you guys might have, and I'll take a look at chat too to see if anything popped up. Um, and thanks again for having us today. Yay, that was fantastic as always. We do, I think we have one question in the chat from Austin uh, asking what role can product reviews play for you know brands that buy thin and then sell out very quickly? They're integrated with Tapcart, so they're wondering, wondering your opinion on that. Yeah, so there's a couple ways to go about that. So A, you still definitely want to capture reviews. And thanks again for that question, Austin. Uh, you can choose what reviews you want to be displayed in Okendo. And you can also group uh, different reviews based off of their product variants. So let's say if you launch a collection of one variant, let's call it like a red version of some Nike Air Jordans, and then you launch a blue version of that, you can still use product grouping to display reviews across different variants. So even though it's not available in red anymore, your, red, uh, your reviews on the red variant can still pop up in that other variant type. So just a great way, once again, to boost search engine traffic and, you know, uh, increased amount of reviews you have on that product. Yeah. And yeah, you can definitely connect afterwards, Austin. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Luis, go ahead and drop your, your email there in the chat yeah. so we can connect with you after, but thank you so much for joining us today. That was fantastic. Right. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks for having me. Soon. Oh, wait, wait.
I'm like, wait, don't go. Uh, we have a. I'm still here. I'm sorry. I'm like, so okay. I haven't left yet. <laughs> we got a giveaway, y'all. Okay, we got milk bar treats. This is important. I can't believe I almost forgot this. I'm like, okay, so milk bar treats winner. Let's see what we got. Iris Nguyen. I don't want to botch that, but Miss Iris, <laughs> Iris, you got it. You are the winner of some milk bar treats. Congratulations. Awesome. And I'm very jealous. Enjoy those. Okay, now, Luis, you can go now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Congrats, Iris. Fantastic stuff going on. All right. We're going to keep the party going. And I am up next, you guys. So I am going to share my screen and we'll get this presentation underway. All right. Hopefully everyone here can see my screen. Um, hello, I am Dylan Duchesne. I am the Technology Partnerships Manager at Gorgeous, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. So for those who are not familiar with Gorgeous, we are a e-commerce customer support help desk. We help you deliver insanely fast and personalized customer conversations. Uh, we work with 9,000 plus brands globally like Steve Madden, Princess Polly, Juicy Couture, and many, many more. So today I'm really excited to talk to you all about how to make exceptional support the new normal, you know, and chat about kind of five different tools and things that you can incorporate into your CX um, operation as like a fashion brand to help achieve that exceptional support. So let's get started. And I'm going to start us off with, you know, an example of what you don't typically want to see. It's that 12 plus 17 plus hour first contact time, resolution time, uh, the lack of personalization, and then leaving the customer feeling unheard and frustrated. So to be completely honest, you know, people are still not doing support that well. So when I look at this slide, you know, all I see is opportunity. You can only go up from here, or in this case, down, because that's what we're aiming for. Uh, but when you do crack the code and start prioritizing your customer experience, it's definitely a great opportunity to stand out from the crowd. Um, you know, we live in this world where it's instant gratification, right? Response times are way too long. We want what we want, and we want it now. Buyers prefer to self-serve, but when the self-serve isn't suited to the question that they have, they want to feel like they're being taken care of by someone who actually cares. And a lot of that time, that means, you know, having the opportunity to have a conversation with, with their brands, interact with a human, and not a chat bot or like an endless loop voice system. Um, and there's been a spread of channels over the last decade. We're all aware of this. You know, it used to be just voice and email, but now there's SMS, there's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. Buyers want to engage with brands in all of these channels, and they don't want to have to repeat themselves if they start the conversation in one channel and then they end it in another. You know, they really want that same consistent experience. So it's no surprise that merchants are paying a huge price for this. You know, slow response times cost merchants a lot of money. Uh, they're losing uh, potential sales opportunities, uh, and they're missing out on the opportunity to really deliver that excellent customer experience, which is definitely one of the main reasons why people come back to your brand again and again. So the million dollar question, how do you deliver exceptional customer service that's fast, personalized and seamless? Well, here at Gorgeous, a few key metrics that we look at when measuring support performance are first response time, resolution time, satisfaction score, and then revenue from support. We can, then can you know measure the health of a customer support program from a level one to five, which you can see on my pretty little graph here. So most brands like I covered are on a, a level one, which is that first response time, the 12 hours, the limited revenue from support. Level five is what we're aiming for. You know, that's that Amazon gold standard, so to speak. Uh, and this equals typically sub 10 minute response times, sub one hour resolution times, automating at least 20% of your support tickets uh, and having eight plus different channels for your customers to be able to find you, get in touch with you. It's really all about that omni-channel presence. So let's dive in. Let's look at some of the ways that we can take your CS team to that level five. Uh, number one. Aggregate all channels, have personalized conversations with customers in the channel of their choice. So we know that customers are engaging with three to five channels typically before even making a purchase, which means we need to be present on as many channels as possible. Uh, we need to respond quickly by having automations in place to help you achieve this. And then we need to drive them back to your website. You know, 
A lot of merchants are using siloed systems to handle all their channels. They have a voice system, chat system, social media monitoring, et cetera. So it makes it challenging to create efficiencies in your CS ecosystem because you can't see the customer journey across all channels and then effectively make a personalized response. So uh, my first recommendation is to leverage a help desk that offers a few key things. You know, it supports all the channels that your customers want to engage with you in. It aggregates all those channels to create one big holistic view of the customer across these multi-channels. Um, and this is what's really going to save you a ton of time and in the long run money, which is very important. Number two is save time and automate up to 30% of your repetitive inquiries. So Gorgeous analyzed around 10,000 customer tickets to better understand what the most commonly asked questions are for our merchants. Uh, and this is the data we got back. I mean, order status being number one, it takes up to, it takes up to 33% of those inquiries. So if you're a brand, imagine what you could do with all the extra time you would have on your hands if you could simply automate and then eliminate 33% of your workload. Amazing. How do we achieve this? So the first step is to tag everything that comes through your support team, you know, so that way you can look at what your most common and repetitive inquiries are. Uh, Gorgeous actually does this automatically by leveraging machine learning. Um, we have already established, you know, typically if you're an e-commerce brand, your number one inquiry or definitely your top three is going to be that where is my order inquiry, especially during a time, you know, delivery is still super unreliable and we're seeing extended delivery times. This is exactly the type of repetitive inquiry where machine learning should be leveraged uh, and where you could use automation to respond versus human interaction. So when I say automation here, though, I'm not talking about like a bot, but rather using machine learning, your different tech stack integrations to respond at scale with someone's personalized information. So if you simply created like a, an automated response to a where is my order ticket, you can free up time for your team to engage with potential customers pre-purchase. So that way you can support conversion instead of just focusing on, you know, reactive engagements post-purchase. Uh, and this is a great example of, you know, kind of leveraging the automation with the personalization by using templates within Gorgeous. So you can really utilize using templates to quickly fill in missing variables, you know, like the order number, address, tracking URL, uh, all while maintaining that personalized, personalized feel. So you're going to want to pull in your customer's specific Shopify data, customize the message to your liking, send away, save time, and then done. Okay, moving right along. Leverage chat. Live chat is the number one feature you can use to reduce response times and speed up interactions pre and post sale. So 85% of websites use chat as a contact form. It typically, you know, sits in the bottom of the website on every page traffic clicks in, they leave their email, they wait for a response. Not only is uh, chat a cheaper channel costing on businesses an average of $3 as opposed to the voice channel, which is usually like eight, but this is also the channel of choice for most buyers under 50 years old. So it's something we want to utilize. You know, the great thing about the chat is that you can use it differently on each part of your website to proactively engage traffic to get them to chat in and then move them towards that purchase. So Chat campaigns can be used to drive self-service, uh, as we see here on the left, where the customer is getting their order information, or it can be leveraged you know, proactively to drive conversion. If someone is on a product page buying some shoes, give them a product-specific discount on chat to get them excited, highlight a review, suggest sizing up and down, whatever it may be, that's what you're going to want to do. Um, little example here, OG Skincare, who is a gorgeous customer. They have a huge product selection and a lot of people don't know what product works well. You know, they don't know what the color looks good on their skin. They can't try it on remotely. So having a proactive chat is highly effective to help make decisions, have the customer ask questions about that color selection. Um, and you can see this, you know, in practice here, this is a real conversation from someone around Christmas. Uh, they're messaging in, they're saying they're a senior, they're having some issues picking the right color, you know, and then someone on the brand side responds, uh, they suggest picking the right color. Um, and then you can see that three minutes later that the customer purchased over $200 worth of products. So by proactively prompting the customer to engage with you, this is definitely going to help you convert them into buyers, get that sale, make that money, which we love. Okay. Number four, turn social browsers into buyers with sentiment detection. Y'all social media is a huge channel these days for driving revenue. So you want to prioritize comments and DMS. You want to leverage machine learning and rules to help you organize them as either negative sentiment 
or a positive sentiment. So rules are a great way to manage and automate your support volume as a whole. Um, an example of a rule is, you know, if the messaging channel, let's say, is Instagram comments and the sentiment of that message is positive, then you're going to want to tag that as a social lead opportunity for purchase. You will gain greater return on ad spend through the identification of warm leads and focusing on converting them to customers. So you can also use this, you know, as an opportunity to get your relevant offers out there. Uh, and then of course, drive people back to your website, which is, which is the main goal. So, you know, an example, if someone leaves a nice comment, they're tagging their girlfriends, uh, you know, oh my God, I love this. So cute. You're going to want to hop on that opportunity, you know, give them a little discount, respond, butter them up, make them happy and then return, drive them back to your website. So there's going to be a huge opportunity by doing so. Now, this does work both ways. So you're also going to want to leverage automations to hide negative comments directly from your help desk, you know, maybe to prevent a particularly vocal person from tarnishing your brand publicly. So whether it's negative, whether it's positive, it's important to hop on those comments right away uh, and then use rules or automations to respond at scale. And number five, as I'm breezing through this, uh, leverage two-way SMS. It is all about leveraging two-way SMS, baby. We have seen a ton of brands have a ton of success when leveraging SMS is a part of their support strategy. So when brands are able to reply in less than 10 minutes, we've seen an incredible 28% convert conversion rate, which is significantly higher usually than the desktop-based pre-sale chats. Um, we have a customer, Olipop. They are one of the best in the game at SMS. So they recently did a campaign where they got product feedback, and then they launched a new flavor based on the data with an early launch solely to their SMS list. So they sent around 10,000 messages. Uh, they generated $64,000 in sales in the first 24 hours, which is crazy. Um, the key here though, it's, it's two-way communication. That's the key. So their CS team responds to every single SMS response. They make it personalized uh, and then they automate the messages where it makes sense. And then in return, this obviously generates a lot of sales. So by integrating your text message marketing platform with your help desk, you can automatically forward all text messages to your customer service team. Uh, and this is going to help you enable your representatives to quickly respond via text. You know, we have found that customers drive 31% more spend from shoppers who receive replies to their text messaging inquiries compared to those who do not. And just some really cool stats, you know, on how Olipop was able to decrease their response time by 88% and their resolution time by 91% all by responding fast, leveraging automation with some personalization, and of course, combining their help desk, which is gorgeous with their two-way SMS marketing platform. So I'm going to wrap it up. You know, I've covered a bunch in a short amount of time, but if I could summarize it all into four points, it would be omni-channel conversations, be everywhere, bring in all of those channel, uh, channels that customers want to reach out to you. And then of course, automate those repetitive inquiries to lo lower those response times, uh, automate, you know, where it makes sense, automation and personalization. So automate where it makes sense so that you can personalize and spend time where it really matters, uh, leverage the chat and the SMS, you guys. And then the number one, uh, if I could say anything is respond fast, you know, that's, what's really going to help you. Uh, and then having those automations in place is also going to really help you respond fast as well. So that's it. That's the end. Um, if you want to learn more about how to get your organization to that level five and deliver that exceptional customer support, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to chat. Uh, I did want to mention we have a special offer going on right now. So if you sign up, you're going to get your second and third month free of gorgeous. And that's it. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right, beautiful. And then we have a little special prize too. That's what I'm looking for. And I think it's AirPod Pros, if I am correct. And we're going to, or I'm going to give those away. All right, let's close my eyes. Tori Pichin. Tori P, you are the winner of AirPod Pros. Congratulations, Story. I hope you love them. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. Yes. Let's keep it. Let's keep it going because I'm liking the rhythm that we're on. Next up, we have Millie from ClearCo. So we're going to bring up Miss Millie to the stage. Millie is the senior portfolio lead at ClearCo. 
Uh, fun fact, Millie loves to hike and same Millie, I absolutely love to hike. If I could choose to camp or like live in Colorado or in the mountains and hike every day, that is, that's my dream day. That's what I want. So hi Millie, how are you? Hi Dylan. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for joining us. I will go ahead and hop off stage and then you can get straight to it. Okay. Excellent. All right. Everybody hear me. Okay. I will be sharing my screen. Let me know if you see this. Everybody good? Okay, excellent. So thank you so much again, Gorgeous, for having me today. I'm Millie from ClearCo, formerly ClearBank. You may have heard of us before. Uh, a quick agenda for the meeting today. So we'll go over a few, um, you know, current state of the fashion industry, a few things that I'm noticing a lot with the founders that we're working with today. Then we'll go through best for fashion brands, we'll cover a clear coast story, and then we'll even go through a few examples. So feel free to write in the chat, happy to answer any of your questions at the end. So a few things that we've noticed with the fashion industry, um, particularly when COVID hit, everybody started working from home, wearing their sweatpants, you know, some subsects of the fashion industry actually slowed down, think things like formal wear, um, you know, people, you know, push their weddings, that kind of stuff. And now we're actually seeing with the global economy reopening, there is a push for people in office, you know, things are thankfully back to normal. And we're seeing a 100% year over year increase for 2022, which presents a lot of opportunity for fashion and apparel brands. So based off of this McKinsey study, one of the major opportunities is this digital um, thing that we're really going to talk about today. And you saw Tapcart, you saw Kendo, you saw all these incredible technologies that can help you with your digital footprint. Gorgeous is another one for uh, customer experience. So this is the biggest opportunity for all these e-com brands um, that still is very much untapped. And there's so many incredible ways to optimize your um, entire digital experience. However, a lot of the challenges that we're seeing with the founders uh, today lie within supply chain, logistics, getting inventory from point A to point B, specifically uh, coming out of, you know, China, overseas, et cetera. And we're seeing lead times that used to be three months are now extended to six to nine months, which is pretty insane. I used to see companies purchase inventory you know, in August for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And now I see companies purchasing inventory now for Black uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which is absolutely insane if you think about it. So the lead times are insane. We're dealing with an inflationary environment as well. So things are more expensive, lots of uncertainty. And there are certain challenges that e-com founders have to face, you know, navigating this environment. Specifically with fashion and apparel brands, you're also dealing with this constant product life cycle that's very quick. You have spring, summer, fall, winter, and new product lines. If you're going into wholesale or you know, you're going into Nordstrom or any of those big box retailers, you also have to have constant pressure on inventory, but then you have these really long life cycles of the inventory. So it creates this very interesting dynamic where a lot of founders have to focus on marketing and inventory. And that's really where ClearCo comes in. Now, to be clear, ClearCo will fund any business expense, but inventory and marketing are certainly the two biggest line items for any e-com company. So in terms of inventory right now, as I mentioned, lead times are absolutely insane, but also you know, ClearCo can help increase your purchasing power with your suppliers. So for example, if you, you know, can get a, a price break on some inventory, ClearCo can help uh, step in and fund that for you. ClearCo will also be able to fund all of your inventory, raw materials, finished goods, uh, duties, tariffs, uh, shipping, anything like that, that, you know, it takes to, to go get from point A to point B. You're also able to expand product lines that perhaps weren't available to you and, um, as mentioned, uh, even shipping freight 
you know, whether or not you, you can't, you know, put it on a container, you can also pay, that tends to be a little more expensive, but if you really just need the inventory ASAP to take advantage of market opportunities, you can also do that as well. Then we see marketing, uh, that is another huge line item. Uh, iOS changes definitely were challenging for merchants. So I do see Google, TikTok is a really big uh, platform that people are investing in nowadays, which is pretty cool. Um, it, it can really help you find new marketing channels and diversify because we saw so many uh, merchants were dependent on Facebook and Google. And it is nice to see more dif differentiation in the space right now. And I, I really truly think that we need that because uh, you know, focusing on one giant is, is you know, a concentration risk for sure. So really expanding this and doubling down on really good ROAS. If you have a ROAS, I would say even greater than two, take advantage of that now because that opportunity might change with, you know, iOS 15 change down the, right, uh, down the line, right? So it's really, really important to start investing in that now. And I'll quickly walk everybody through traditional financing options and where ClearCo fits in, because this might be relevant to many of the founders on the call. And I think we even have a few uh, ClearCo founders on the call, which is quite exciting. So in terms of venture debt, this is certainly um, an option. I'll go through each one and you'll kind of see the pros and cons. So venture debt is really good if uh, you have an investment that has an unknown ROI date. So for example, hiring an, uh, an, an engineer or some C-suite in the company, really good use case for venture debt. Um, one of the things to keep in mind though, is you have to be a venture backable company. People who sell you know, certain things online might not want to have a, you know, to be venture backed, which is totally fine. Um, it does have confidence you know, it is dilutive as well, and it can get pretty expensive if you are willing to dilute the company. And we always say at ClearCoat, you shouldn't be diluting for things like inventory and marketing because that money, luckily in the 21st century, is very easy to come by. The other option as an e-com company is to give away equity. This one I would say is it's a good idea if you have like someone strategic who can help you, you know, get into, you know, I don't know, some some very great partnership, um, you know, proven strategies. They have a great network. They can really take you. And it's more than just the money that they're providing. Um, if it's just a check, like I mentioned, there are so many different ways to finance companies nowadays in this era that uh, equity should kind of be the last resort. And as I mentioned, it is very expensive. Um, you know, equity can cost 80 to 100%. And for inventory marketing, probably not the best use case, but it certainly is great for strategic um, direction. Another thing to keep in mind if you are giving away equity is that, you know, that person or group of investors, they might require a board seat, which ultimately takes control away from the founder. So it's something to think about if you are looking to go down that route. In terms of banks, lines of credit, those are generally pretty uh, cost effective. However, they do collateralize your inventory, your assets, perhaps your mortgage, whatever that might look like for you. There's credit checks, there's certain elements that could take a little longer, and you at least need two years of history. Where ClearCo operates is the alternative financing space. Most of you guys might be familiar with, you know, revenue-based financing, um, you know, buy now, pay later, all those things that ClearCo uh, uh, offers to our merchants. The pros is that it's very flexible, it's fast, you know, it's efficient, especially taking advantage of market opportunities. However, they are shorter term than banks. There's certain stipulations like not reading wholesale revenue, um, which I've seen on the team. So that's really where... ClearCo operates is in this alternative financing space. So a little on us. So our founders are Andrew and Michelle. Michelle is on the Canadian Shark Tank and they actually were just filming now, um, which is very exciting. And that's where the idea of ClearCo came from was on that show where founders were giving away the equity and Michelle said, hey, there has to be a better way. And that's ultimately where ClearCo uh, came from. And that was seven years ago. 
since then, we've deployed 3.2 billion over 7,000 companies globally. We're the world's largest e-commerce investor. Some pretty impressive stats when you start taking the bias out of decision making is that we've been able to fund 25 more female founders, nine times more BIPOC, seven times more LGBTQIA founders than traditional VCs. And that's just a testament to the data-driven model that we've built. And a fun fact is that fashion and apparel make 42% of ClearCo's global portfolio. So how it works is it's super simple. We would plug into your you know, Shopify, your Amazon, what have you. We would then underwrite using your data and then we would provide capital offers and we can even fund within uh, 48 hours. So it's all super seamless. We're able to fund, like I mentioned, all the biggest line items. And it's re really just designed to optimize cash flow and help you reach your growth goals faster. And at a high level, I don't want to spend too much time here, but the fee structure is super simple. It's 6% flat for inventory and or marketing. Um, it's based off of revenue share, no personal guarantees, and it frees up you know, your budget to take advantage of amazing market opportunities that you might have in front of you, uh, whether that is hiring new people, optimizing your customer experience. Uh, you know, you might want to, you know, really invest in any of these technologies that we heard today. We can cover that as well. So uh, any of those software costs to running your Shopify store is, uh, is quite neat. Another thing that we offer is insights and benchmarking. So one of the cool things is if you're looking at how do I stack up against my competition? And how can I optimize the performance of my store in terms of ROAS, in terms of CAC, AOV, ad spend as a percentage of revenue, what have you, we can actually benchmark you for, let's call it the apparel industry or the CPG industry or whatever that might look like, beauty. And you'll be able to see how you stack up against those competitors and what are those main areas of opportunity. And there are, there's some incredible founders I just want to showcase here. One of them is Park and Fifth. They're based out of beautiful Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada. They're one of our clients and they were actually able to use Gorgeous. So shout out to you guys, Gorgeous, uh, doing an incredible job. Um, they had a 300% increase in monthly revenue, um, a huge growth in their online sales and a thousand virtual bookings. So if you haven't heard of Park and Fifth, they're, they're wonderful. They do a lot of like bridesmaids and um, wedding dresses. Absolutely beautiful and a wonderful client to work with. Another one is Tiki's. They were actually investing in marketing and inventory and allowed them more freedom to grow. Many ways ClearCo buys merchants time it's not only these physical goods or this marketing, we're purchasing time. So you can actually, again, like I mentioned, like take advantage of opportunities now than, you know, waiting on, you know, six months, 12 months, and then, you know, those opportunities are gone. They were able to develop new product lines and um, they actually were able to double in size. A lot of you may know Tiki's as the flip-flop brand. So they were able to actually expand beyond just their namesake brand and, and namesake product and go into other areas and SKUs, which is very exciting. And then finally, our wonderful uh, client Nova Octo, they were able to gain a whole new customer base by investing in marketing channels and their revenue grew to 3000% they were able to increase website traffic. And uh, the best part is this incredible female founder. She was able to retain 100% of her company. She did not have to dilute. And um, you know, ultimately she controls the vision and the mission of the company. So that's what we're all about. I really wanna, you know, um, just, the, it's incredible. It's super, super, super inspiring uh, as you know, an aspiring female founder like myself. Another one is Freedom Underwear. They invested in inventory, they doubled revenue, um, and you know, the list goes on. I don't wanna bore you with all these incredible stories. Uh, if you guys wanna reach out, feel free to 
you know, find me on LinkedIn or email me Millie at Clear, ClearBank. I think um, Amy and the team might want to drop a link in the chat here, but thank you so much for having me and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yay. Thank you, Millie. That was fantastic. Um, we have one question in the chat actually from Amy. It's, can you define marketing a little further? You know, what exactly can I use my capital on from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, that's a great question, Amy. So we can cover any marketing expense, agency expense. We can cover any of the apps just uh, discussed today. So it could be, you know, um, Gorgeous, Okendo, Tapcart, like literally most of your Shopify apps would be covered by us. Uh, goes without saying Facebook, Google, Instagram, YouTube, the list goes on. Uh, and then I don't know if I mentioned the marketing agencies as well. So Nice. It's a very broad bucket uh, of line items, but lots, yeah. Lots of opportunity there. Well, Millie, I might just have you drop your, your email in the chat so that way people know how to contact you and get in touch with you if there's any further questions. But thank you so much for joining us today. That was really great. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Oh, wait. Again, I did it again, y'all. I'm the worst. We have a giveaway. Welcome back, Millie. <laughs> so they're doing a $100 gift card to Gusto, which I wasn't sure what that was, but it's you can pick and choose from thousands of different vendors. So you get kind of, you get to pick your choice, which is really, really cool. So let's do it. Ricardo Rubio. Ricardo Rubio, you are the winner of a $100 gift card to Gusto. So congratulations, Ricardo. Okay, Millie, thank you so much. All right. Congrats, Ricardo. Thanks so much for having me again. Bye. Of course. Thank you. Congrats, Ricardo. All right. I promise I'm not going to forget. It's almost Friday. That's why I keep keep like blacking out a little bit. All right. Let's move on to our last, but definitely not least. We have Katya from Grin. We are going to bring you up on stage, Katya. Um, Katya is the director of content at Grin. I don't have a fun fact for Miss Katya, but oh um, no! That's right. like, I, I am the fun fact. What can I say? Like, you just that. came on with your beautiful jewelry, and I'm like, you are, you are the party, you are the fun. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. No problem, no problem at all. Can you guys see my sharing? Yes, I can see it. It looks fantastic. And okay, perfect. Pop off. Anybody who has ever seen me on anything virtual knows that this is the um this is the part that i worry about the most is is this this element of sharing but um as she mentioned my name is katya allison i am the director of content at grin i am also the host of the grin gets real podcast and the host of a brands talking influencers fireside chat series i am so excited to be here today to just kind of talk to you guys about um, leveraging influencers for fashion and brand apparel. So let's hit the ground running and get started with the semantics of it all. Uh, when I'm talking about influencers, what I'm talking about is, or this is how I define influencers. Uh, an influencer is a person with the ability to influence their community to try, buy, or learn more about really anything. And they do this by creating content that gets their community community engaged. Now you'll hear me reference creators and influencers. The tweak in the definition of only talking about influencers is that that content that is created to keep that community engaged lives typically on social media, whereas creators are bloggers and they're podcasters, affiliates, athletes, journalists. Uh, that's just to name a few. So while all influencers are creators, not all creators are influencers on social media. But why do influencers work to begin with? 88% um, of consumers really trust online recommendations as much as they do personal recommendations. So that's basically social proof. Not only is it social proof, but creators and influencers, they don't have to worry about ad blocking. They also, as a brand, you can deploy many at once. And this is my favorite. You always get brand awareness, content, community, and revenue. Now, how much of each of those that you get really depends on what your strategy is. Some kind of proof in the pudding can really be seen in the customers that we help support with our creator management platform. The top five benefits that customers experience leveraging creators as their marketing strategy that are also Grin customers are brand awareness, 
content production, social media presence growth, sales growth, yup, there is revenue involved with influencers, uh, and brand community. Of those people who were surveyed, 86% say that influencers are an effective marketing strategy. So let's talk about strategy. Influencers can be used throughout the entire customer journey and down the entire marketing funnel. First, influencers can create brand awareness and that's the top of the funnel. And they do this by introducing your brand story and product to their audience. In fashion, what that looks like is the classic unboxing or a haul video. They also nurture your audience and educate them on your brand. So that's that middle of the funnel. It's the show me how to wear it. That's what it looks like in fashion, as well as tell me what I feel like when I wear it. And you know the power of a good hair day, a pair of jeans that makes everything look great, um, or in my case, a statement necklace that's going to get you through a webinar. Um, that last part is leveraging discount codes and affiliate links uh, with influencers. They can get you that bottom of the funnel conversion and help you make that sale. Now, the key to truly leveraging influencers for that entire marketing funnel that I just went through, especially in fashion and apparel, is having influencers be your content creators. Okay, now in the world, in the world, now I'm gonna get all jumbled up, it's the globe, right? <laughs> With a global fashion influencer marketing market size expected to grow, um, 35% from 2020 to 2027. If you're not leveraging the influence of those fashionistas and partnering with them as content creators, you're really missing out. With the growth of technology, increased use of social media networks, and the expansion of social media networks in general, hello TikTok, it's made it almost a requirement for fashion marketers to invest into influencer marketing. Now, this chart that this chart, this chart that I'm showing is broken down by influencer type. Now, many brands see a ton of success with micro and nano influencers because they're more accessible and cost-effective because they are also less likely to ask for that flat fee and are more inclined to be satisfied with partnering with brands that they love for product gifting only. But while I consistently see that, it's more important for you as a brand to set your goals, test campaigns, test influencers and networks to truly determine what type of influencer works best for your brand. Now, I have this kind of list of uh, content asks and also creator tactics for you. It's, let's call it an inspiration list for you. And this is what people have been doing as of late. So it's a list of the types of content or tactics that are leveraged by a lot of US brands. It's product mentions, social media, blogs, product co-creation, it's giveaways and challenges, it's brand ambassador programs, um, and then curated product lists, just to name a few. Okay. Now, those were the list of things that people are already doing. I'm going to give you kind of my top three tactics. And these tactics can all be used with influencers or creators to increase your reach and lower that cost per acquisition. The first one. The first one is mastering the drop. A drop is a special release that is limited in quantity or time. This taps into FOMO. And we all know FOMO. The fear of missing out on something that's pretty exclusive. It really taps into the psyche of that consumer. 60% of people make purchases because of FOMO. Use that stat for your next icebreaker. Or maybe that should have been my fun fact, right? Um, there are other benefits to that mastering the drop, and that's um, you have more control over inventory management. It also creates this community and a buzz around, around your brand. Number two tactic. That's live shopping. I'm a big fan of this. Now, so live shopping takes place on live or going live across social media platforms. It's an interactive way to really sell while also connecting to your community. 61% of shoppers engage in watching live streams. Let that one soak in a little bit. Now, social media channels have different versions of this. A couple of my favorites are Facebook, 
an oldie but a goodie and Instagram. Those that's Instagram checkout and live rooms. Uh, what I like about the Instagram live rooms with creators is that as a brand, you can run a live Q and A with a creator on there. Number three tactic, it's tagging. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you can add product tag now, product tags now to feed posts on Instagram and tie those product tags back to your shop. Now, creating a shop on Instagram is available for creators now. Um, that's been the latest news as well, too, which means that for those long-term partnerships that you have with creators, you can have them basically create a sell of or sell of a set of what I what I call haul videos. And those are all going to be connected to shops, ideally, for that creator. And then that that creator community can then basically shop those looks. All right, I'm going to read this verbatim. In order to maintain genuine relationships between influencers and brands, these new e-commerce features should be used in a meaningful way that resonates with influencers, with an influencer's audience. The reason that I read that one verbatim is because it's so incredibly important. While all of these new content types are the that I just went over have the potential to add so much value to your marketing strategies and provide you that positive return on your investment. Authenticity trumps everything. So how do you get that authentic content? Through authentic relationships with influencers and creators. They have to be invested in you just as much as you are invested in them. And while that does take some time, there are ways to really measure the content that they're creating for your brand that can help you evaluate which content to leverage and which influencer will really help you achieve those goals. Um, now, while it is tough to choose a part of Grin that can be impactful for your program, because there are so many, for example, we've got a recruitment suite, audience insights reports, email communication, uh, fulfillment, influencer payments, really the list goes on. But what I really do want to focus on is that content area of Grin. And the reason behind focusing on that is because content is that bridge between an influencer management, between influencer management and the rest of the marketing strategy and team. Content connects the marketing team. So what does that look like in Grin? Within Grin, the content area, you have one spot for all of your creator content. It automatically gets pulled in with predetermined hashtags and mentions. So there's no more scrambling to look for that content. On top of that, we have this layer of filters that you can use to find the ideal content for whatever your objective is, whether it's your website or your email. These filters include um, automatic tags that are associated uh, with that particular image. We also take a look at the colors within your image. Let's say you've got like a pumpkin spice, you know, fall campaign that's going on. Take a look at the color orange and really aggregate all of that content that you can use for those campaigns. We all, those filters also take a look at engagement metrics as well, uh, social networks, and kind of the date of posting as well. On top of that, there's a way to organize all of that content into folders so that you can share that with your broader marketing team. Does your social team need content to post on organic? Go ahead and put together an approved list of or approved folder of images that they can repurpose. We also have this how I define it is visual social listening. Um, it's where you can check out who's not in your program, but who is talking about you by following some trending hashtags and reviewing that content and the metrics behind that content to see if that's something that that could work. Now, I promise I'm going to leave you some tips. So here are three tips for getting that right content for your influencers and creators. Number one, let creators develop the content that works best for their audience with minimal guidance. I know what you're thinking. I am also a control freak, but that doesn't mean that you let them go out there in the wild. Just know that that right creator, the right creator, taking the time to find the right creator means that you don't have to hold their hand. They know what resonates with their audience. So let them do their thing. Also, number two, avoid product placement and explore new ways to stand out online and ways to shop. Some of those three tactics that I went over, those are great ways to reach out to and engage with a creator and their community. Show what your brand looks like out there as well. 
think inspiration and aspiration and leverage those creators to help them tell your brand story visually. And the last one, explore video. Long form, short form, explore it all. People want to see moving parts. Look for that thumb scrolling content and video is going to be one of them. And on that note, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope that we have questions or maybe just friendly comments. Dylan, you there? I'm here. It takes forever <laughs> to come back on screen. It's like crazy. That was that was wonderful. I mean, no questions because it was so insightful, but Lauren is saying, you know, they have struggled with finding the right creator in the past. Yes. You know what I mean? Not just looking for free products. So these were great tips. I think this was very, very helpful. And I agree. The right creator Fantastic. is everything. So thank you so much. I promise I'm not forgetting this giveaway. It's <laughs> Athletic Greens AG1 single subscription box, which is amazing. So I'm going to close my eyes. Tess Olson, you are the winner of an athletic green subscription box. Congratulations, Tess. Put ice when you shake those athletic greens. It's delicious. Agreed. Agreed. It's so much better now. <laughs> it's so much better with ice. I know. Well, thank you so much, Katya. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, I mean, we've come, we've come to the end, which is very, very sad. I'm going to share my screen one last time. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It was so, so lovely having everyone here. We have some upcoming tech webinars. If you guys want to join more of these, you're always more than welcome. Just go to dtcx.io where you can see all of our upcoming webinars uh, with more incredible speakers each and every time. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. I really hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful rest of your day.